This is the Lens LAN interface. It's connected by USB to the laptop here and by ExpressNet back to the LZV100, uh, the command station of the SET90 or the SET100. Um, it's just got a, a faceplate here to make the, the connection back to that. Okay, we're ready to put the software in. Just follow the on-screen instructions. They come up in English if, the, if your computer's set in English. Files on the disk. The first one is the actual um, setup files and window in. Docu is documents and then driver files. We'll go into the first one. This is LIUSB and we'll start that running. You get the sort of standard program setup pages where it tells you where it's all going to go on the computer. So program files. You can move it at this point if you wanted to. Next and next to install. Once it's gone through all the installation, it will just say close. So we've done that. You'll see some new icons have turned up on the screen. You've got LIB, LI USB throttle, CV editor, configuration, and the USB server down here. Let's close that. Open the server. When the server comes up. It asks you what language you want everything to be in. Put it into English. And the server is now connected. So if I open the throttle, like on the main track there, you can control it. The throttle looks like the LH100 basically. Up in the top, you'll see an additional thing where you can set up the speed steps for that decoder 28 being the standard, or 128 if you want to go over the top. I've now changed the loco to a Lentz uh, silver fitted loco, uh, wired the track to the PQ, the programming track on the um, LZV100, and what I've done oops, is open the LI USB CV editor. First thing to do is go to File, Open Decoder Description Files, and look for Lentz silver. EN for English. Okay, and down at the bottom there it will say what decoder you're looking at. Go into general settings, you can just read the address. And it's reading long address, so it's reading the, the four CVs associated with that. Um, start voltage, CV2, CV3, starting delay, and CV4, breaking delay. I've also got here is a, a speed curve, and if I read that, it will go through all the CVs associated with the user-defined speed curve. This is all data that you can save as files and then apply to a different decoder. Up here it says all CVs. You can read all the CVs, write to all the CVs, or you can just read a group of CVs. So if I want to go into a group, I can press read group and it will read all these CVs listed in that group. Or you can go into individual CDs and just read it and rewrite it there. Because it's a silver decoder it's showing ABC braking and it will show you the, the setup for that. Quite nicely it gives you explanations of what's going on and it will show you next to the CV the 8 bits that are associated with that CV. It also shows you the default from LAMPS. Part of the program that's installed on the desktop is the LIUSB configuration we open there, it will automatically read uh, command station LZV100 version 3.6 version of the software and e uh, LAN USB. The only one that you'd really want to change is the ExpressNet ID. It just if you've got a clash and two items on ExpressNet with the same ID you would change that number. 
This computer is actually running Windows 7 64-bit and it is actually working. It found the correct drivers on the disk to connect it. The problem I did have was a problem with ExpressNet. So what I've done is actually used a different cable and gone directly into ExpressNet here. Um, if obviously you've got a damaged ExpressNet cable, it fouls up the whole system.